audience's appetite for in-depth, unbiased and factual reportage is the driving principle for this program in order to bring government activities to the doorstep of the people. Now let's go through the highlights of today's report. Lagos Senator distributes 10,000 food packs to residents. Minister of Information says federal government has attracted $30 billion of foreign de uh, deposit. Gratefulness moves God's hands to do more, OK Chinda. And NDLA arrests eight suspects in nationwide raid. We'll go for a very short break, and when we return, go straight to the details. people into our the country illegally. That is amazing. Our Honourable you, 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 Sahara, we bring on sport news, live analysis, expert discussions on trending stories in politics, business, socioeconomy, sports, and documentaries. So catch all the updates on the happenings around the globe. Stay focused on the fact today, only on ATN. Welcome back, and now we dive into the details for today. A man identified as Idris Shehu is currently in police custody for allegedly killing his friend Togo Al Haji during an argument in E2 local government area of Akwaibom State. Correspondent gathered that the incident occurred on February the 6th when contacted the state police. Public relations officer Odiko McDon confirmed the incidents to our correspondent. He added that following an altercation, the suspect stabbed the deceased with a machete and dropped the body into the river. McDonald noted that following an investigation, the suspects confessed to committing the crime. A yet-to-be-identified nurse in Okeowa in the Ijebode area of Ogun State is currently on the run after allegedly carrying out an abortion on one Deborah Shokoya. According to the information made available to pressmen by a police source, the said abortion failed, leading to a serious bleeding and the subsequent hospitalization of the victim. Our correspondent further gathered that the Shokoya had earlier informed her partner, identified as Peter Balogun, that she would be paying a visit to her elder sister, known as Mutiat Shokoya. After reaching Mutiat's house, located in the Perry area of Ijebo, the pressman learned that the source that Deborah was lured by her elder sister to the location where the alleged abortion was carried out. This, according to the police, led to uncontrolled bleeding and the victim was subsequently taken to a hospital for medical treatment. Meanwhile, when contacted about the incident on Saturday, the state police public relations Olola Udutola said a preliminary investigation showed the boyfriend who reported the matter had also abortion on the same girlfriend as far back as 2023. She added that both Mutiat and the boyfriend of the victim, Balogun, have been detained for interrogation. 
A man identified simply as Remy was reportedly stabbed to death following an argument that ensured between him and some members of the community in the Ijeun Tintu area of Abiokuta South local government area of Ogun State. Correspondent gathered from a source who pleaded anonymity for fear of being interrogated that the incident occurred in the early hours of Saturday after some persons suspected to be loan sharks had come to harass Remy. It was gathered that an argument ensured between Remy and the trio of Sheyi, Ayeke, and Bado, and in the process, Remy was stabbed in the neck. The impact of the cut was said to have caused Remy to lose a lot of blood, which eventually led to his death. Meanwhile, upon seeing that Remy had given up the ghost, Sheyi and Ayeke were said to have fled the scene of the incident, while Bado was apprehended by the community members and handed over to the police. The state's police public relations officer, Omorola Odutola, confirmed the incidents to our correspondents, stressing that an investigation had commenced into the matter. A case of suspected murder was reported at one of the divisional police stations in Abiokuta. One Remy Lekun Omotayo was stabbed in the neck by one Owe Ido over a minor agreement on a loan. Investigations have commenced into the matter to ensure justice is served. Anyone found guilty will be punished according to the law, Odu Dola said. No, there's more news, but don't forget you can still connect with us and watch us on our ATN socials, Facebook and YouTube, Atlantic Television Network, Instagram and TikTok, Atlantic TV Network One, on X, formerly Twitter, Atlantic TV Net, and watch us live on our website, AtlanticNetwork.tv. Six suspected cultists have been arrested in Ipetu Ijesha, Oshun State, while traveling to the south-south part of the country. A reliable security source who spoke on the condition of anonymity with our correspondent on Sunday said residents who saw, who saw the suspects at the motor park contacted the police. According to him, the suspects were in the process of boarding a vehicle to Ipetu Ijesha going to Ile Uluji from where they intended to join another one that would take them to Delta State when some eagle-eyed residents who were suspicious of their movement informed police operatives from the anti-cultism unit of Ocean State Police Command. The source further said that arms and ammunition were recovered from the suspects as the operatives swooped on them before they left the premises of the motor park. The Oshun State Police Command's Public Relations Officer, Yemisi Opalola, who confirmed the development, said that the suspects traveling from Ilori in Kwara State were heading to Delta State, where the operatives from the command arrested them inside a motor park in Ipetu, Ijesha. The Standards Organization of Nigeria has arraigned two businessmen, Afam Ike and Steve Onyechi, before the Federal High Court in Lagos for allegedly packaging and selling counterfeit expression hair extensions and attachments. The dough were arranged on three counts bordering on conspiracy, repackaging, dealing in and possessing counterfeit hair products preferred against them by Standard Organization of Nigeria. The prosecuting counsel, Mr. Yusuf Lawan, told the court that the defendants who are traders at the Balogun Market, Lagos Island, were arrested with a fake rich braid brand of Expressions product on December the 2nd, 2022. Yusuf, an assistant chief state counsel in the Federal Ministry of Justice, alleged that, the, that Ike and Unyechi imprinted a false expression rich braid trademark on the counterfeit extensions. She said that the aim was to deceive buyers into believing that the products were genuine at Attachments. According to the prosecutor, the offenses contravene Section 516 of the Criminal Code Act in 2004 and Section 1, Subsection 18A and I of the Miscellaneous Offenses Act 2004. The prosecution said that Ike and Onyechi also violated Sections 3, Subsections 1B and 3, Subsections 2, and 1 and subsection 1 of the Trade Malpractice Miscellaneous Offenses Act 2004 and punishable under section 1, subsection 1. The duo, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge. Consequently, Justice Friday Ogazi 
granted them bail in the sum of 1.5 million each, with two shorties each in the like sum, who must be senior civil servants or landowners. The case was adjourned to July the 3rd, 2024, for the commencement of the trial. John Uko, a 60-year-old man, appeared before Magistrate O.Y. Adefope at the Yaba Chief Magistrate Court on charges of allegedly stealing three cars. The defendant faced two counts of theft, accused of stealing three cars with a total value of 9.8 million naira. In November 2022, on the Stella Sholanke Sh Street, Ajao Estate, Lagos, the defendant is alleged to have fraudulently converted a 2006 Toyota Sienna car, a 2007 Toyota Corolla car, and a 2006 Toyota Camry car, all valued at 9.8 million naira, belonging to one Mrs. Folake Brown without her consent. Prosecutor Haruna Magaji informed the court that the alleged offenses occurred in November 2022. He added that the alleged offenses contravened sections 280, subsection 1, and sections 314, subsection A, of the Criminal Law of Lagos, 2015. The defendant pleaded not guilty. Magistrate Adefope granted him bail of 1 million naira with two shorties. The case was adjourned to April the 19th, 2024. A Lagos Senator Idiat Adebule on, son on Saturday distributed 10,000 food packs to some residents of her constituency at the police college in the Ikeja area of the state. During the distribution exercise, Ms. Adebule, who is representing Lagos West District at the National Assembly, said that the intervention is to support our constituents considering the prevailing hardship in the country. Speaking on the cause of the living crisis, Nigerians are contending with Ms. Adebule noted that the high cost of living was not peculiar to Nigeria. She urged Nigerians to support the administration of President Bola Tinubu. She said that the administration's policies were difficult but appropriate and will surely lead us to sustainable economic prosperity and national stability. As we grapple with the fallout of the ongoing economic reforms, we must acknowledge that the cost of living crisis is a global phenomenon and not peculiar to Nigeria. However, the sacrifices being made today will help us to build a more resilient economy and assure us of a better tomorrow, she said. The Executive Secretary at Kitty State Forestry Commission, Sunday Adekunle, says that the commission is raising 60,000 tree seedlings to fight deforestation as part of efforts to boost, plantain, to boost plantation farming and fight deforestation in the state. Adekunle said that the seedlings of various species will be sold to interested members of the public at subsidized rates and also planted at the degraded parts of the forest reserves in the state adding that the rate of deforestation and climate change driven wildfires resulting in the loss of about 10 million hectares of forest yearly globally was worrisome and unacceptable. Adekunle, who disclosed this in Adoekiti at an event with the team Forest and Innovation, New Solution for a Better World to mark the 2024 International Day of Forest said no stone will be left unturned in the bid to end deforestation and illegal activities in Ekiti Forest and, the com and commended the Ekiti State Governor, Biodun Oyebanji, for taking the bold steps to address the ugly trend in deforestation and illegal activities of some unscrupulous loggers. A Kano State Governor, ya Abba Yusuf said his administration allocated only 1.93 billion naira and not 6 billion naira for the Ramadan feeding program. The governor, who disclosed this in a statement on his ex handle, said that the actual amount for the program is the sum of 1.97 billion naira for the whole month. He expressed his disappointment during an unscheduled inspection of a feeding center in Gidan Maza municipal local government area and the criticized the program what he perceived as their failure 
to adequately serve the intended beneficiaries. Governor Uba Asani of Kaduna State has distanced controversial Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi from the release of the school children adopted in Kuriga area of the state. Sani said Gumi had offered to negotiate with the bandits for the release of the students but was not involved. Bandits had abducted 137 school children on March the 7, 2024 from Chikun local government area of the state. In the wee hours of pupils, confirming the report, the Nigerian military said that the pupils were rescued from Zamfara State. However, Sani dismissed claims that the ransom was paid to effect the release of the pupils. You are watching Government and Public Service Reports on Atlantic Television Network. We will be back after this very short break. Please stay tuned. <music> People into the um, country um, illegally. Um, that is amazing. Online.
across the ocean to the land beyond the mountains through the Sahara. We bring on sport news, live analysis, expert discussions on trending stories in politics, business. Social economy, sports, and documentaries. So catch all the updates on the happenings around the globe. Stay on the fact today only on ATN. across the ocean to the land beyond the mountains through the Sahara we bring on sport news live analysis expert discussions on trending stories in politics business social economy sports and documentary so catch all the updates on the happenings around the globe Stay focused on the fact today only on ATM. Today only on ATM. Welcome back to Government and Public Service Reports on Atlantic Television Network right here in the city of Port Harcourt. And now to the rest of our stories. Federal government has conduct, concluded plans to train some newly recruited personnel of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory as school safety, school safety protection squad to halt cases of abduction of school children from their schools. The commander of the, nation, of the National Safe Schools Response Coordination Center of the NSCDC, Hamed Abodurin, disclosed this in an interview with pressmen on Sunday, just as the defense headquarters said troops rescued the 137 abducted pupils of the LEA primary school and the government secondary school, Kurija, in the Chikul local government area of Kaduna State within Zamfara State. This came as President Bola Tinubu welcomed the news of the release of the Kurija school children, as well as the release of pupils of the Sangaya School in Sokoto State, commending all the parties involved in the feat for their valiant efforts. The defense headquarters announced that 137 Cardinal school children were rescued, but it did not explain what happened to the remaining as 287 pupils were kidnapped from the schools on March the 7th, 2024. Efforts to get further clarifications from the defense headquarters did not succeed as the Directorate of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, didn't pick up calls to his mobile telephone and had yet to respond to a message sent to him as at the time of filing this report. 
but the Kaduna State Governor, Senator Uba Asani, put the number of the abducted pupils at 137. On March the 7th, 2024, there were reports that 287 pupils and teachers of LEA Primary School and the Government Secondary School, Kuriga, in the Chikunlukun government area of Kaduna State were abducted by suspected terrorists who took them into the forest. Their abductors subsequently requested a ransom of 1 billion naira for their release, setting a deadline of March 27, 2024 for the payment. But the director of the Defense Media Operations, Major General Buba, in a statement on Sunday, stated that the victims were rescued in the early hours of Sunday by the troops with support from local authorities and government agencies. Buba put the number of rescued victims at 137, comprising 76 females and 61 males, adding that they were rescued in Zamfara State and will be conveyed to, uh, to Kaduna, where they were handed over to the state government. The National Hajj Commission has requested 2024 Intending pilgrims to pay an additional 1.918 million naira amidst naira fluctuation against the U.S. dollar. The commission disclosed this in an update released through its official ex handle on Sunday, noting that the intending pilgrims should pay up the additional cost before 11.59 p.m. 28th of March 2024. Recall that the commission had earlier pegged the fare for Hajj at about 4.9 million naira, depending on the departure zone, as approved by the government. However, according to NACON, the revaluation of the naira against the U.S. dollar in the foreign exchange market resulted in additional costs. The Commission added that 6,441 intended pilgrims had made the initial payments and were advised to visit their state pilgrims board to confirm their status. The states include Bauchi, which had the highest figure of 2,290, followed by Adamawa, 1,767, Dudley Edo, 205, and others make up the number of 6,441. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mohammed Idris, said that the federal government has attracted $30 billion foreign direct investments to the real sector of the economy. Idris said this when he met with the business community in Kanu on Friday. According to him, President Bola Tinubu's new oil and gas policy reforms program, when, he, when implemented, will generate a billion cubic feet per day additional gas supply as well as create 2.3 billion jobs. The minister said that it will boost the country's gross domestic product by $17 billion, compress natural, uh, Nigeria's oil and gas contracting cycle from 38 months to 6 months. The minister also said that the new tax incentives being implemented had the potential to attract up to $10 billion in new oil and gas investments. He said that the new presidential policy will reduce operating costs for oil and gas operations in Nigeria, which was higher than the global average. Idris said that already Nigeria's oil production had risen from 1.22 million barrels per day in quarter two. Uh, two. to 1.6 million barrels per day in quarter one 2024 post oil subsidy removal economic relief and interventions he said that already about 3.3.1 million households had received initial payments before the program was suspended for review and reform the minister said that all these programs were geared towards boosting the nation's economy Honorable Ogundu Kingsley Chinda remarks that gratefulness moves God's hand to do more and that it's responsible for his upliftment. The minority leader, House of Representatives, at the Thanksgiving service to celebrate his 58th birthday anniversary and electoral victory at the polls and subsequent elections as the minority leader and House of Representatives and investiture as the grand patron, Boys 
Brigade Obiapo Council on Sunday, 24th March 2024 at St. Mark's Anglican Church, Elilimo, Port Harcourt. Honorable Chinda stated that he is thanking God for the gift of life, his political progression, which is attributed to his leader, Chief Yeson Wike, the FCT minister and former governor of River State. The minority leader admonished politicians to be grateful and selfless. My very dear colleagues from the National Assembly, the Senator and members of House of Reps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me say that I do not have any reason not to thank God. I have countless reasons why I should continue to thank God. Time will not permit me to take you on a historical excursion to my background. Perhaps you will understand better. But let me say thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Let me also say that whilst we thank God, I said so in church, but I will keep saying it. God does not come down himself. God will bless you through people. And one thing you must know is that we are created, all of us, we are created not for our own selfish interest, but to add joy and happiness to the life of others. And so when anybody or anything adds joy or happiness to your own life, the best you can do is to show gratitude for that. I asked a question in church, I said, who? If I ask you, and even here I know, is the same answer. Who can I pinpoint as the person who has added joy and happiness to my own life? And we all know the person. His Excellency is the one year so wicked, and his wife. So I will say again, Your Excellency, I am very grateful myself, my family, Elelewa community, all the above, and indeed River State. We are grateful to you. Aside that, I will also express my gratitude to the community. Elelewa has been wonderful. I don't believe in reincarnation. But if reincarnation exists, everybody here present, I will want to come from a little more again. I was elected to represent Toby Apple in the seventh assembly. After that, I did not expect I would go back to the House of Reps. For he made it possible. After the second term, I forgot about the third term. But again, he stood by me and said, Look, I would want to finish with you. And we went back, and because of his presence, the people of Obia were accepted. It is not my popularity. For this term, all of us that are leaders, we are also aware of what happened. The only thing I will say, let me not take much time because I have a lot, but the only thing I will say is that I stand to reassure the people of Obia Poor Federal Constituency in particular, and indeed the entire state, that I will never fail. My very dear colleagues from the National Assembly. Delivering the sermon, Venerable Azubike Ugoha urged people to be steadfast and resilient. What is Thanksgiving? Professor Alexander Walker, one of the foremost English experts who is the author of New Webster International Dictionary Encyclopedia Edition. Define the Thanksgiving 
in four ways. He said, number one, thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks to God. Number two, thanksgiving is the expression of gratitude to Him. Or to somebody that helped you to come up in life. It's not only to God. God uses men to put you where you are. There is no self-made man. What you are, where you are, somebody helped you to be there. And when you forget it, you are biting the finger that fed you. So as you thank God, you also appreciate those who supported you. Even your driver should be appreciated. If he decide to arrange for your kidnapping, you will be kidnapped. You will be in the kidnappers then. You don't know when the election Appreciate your food. If you collect money and poison your food, you'll be like Tunde, Ibiyama, who drank tea and died. What is Thanksgiving? Professor Alexander Walker, one of the foremost. In his remark, the FCT minister, Chief Nyesong Wike, stated that O.K. Chinda is a consistent and grateful person whom he would always support unlike ungrateful individuals who pretend. Coming out to make this occasion of birthday and reception of a lost son, a dependable son, a consistent person. I'm not pleading the speaker. I can send the people, everybody here, to remain and give support to what Agora is uh, doing. Okay, Chinda, I'm here to say, how you worked with me and how God has blessed him to me. God bless you because God knows you are a grateful person. Because God knows you are a straightforward person. Well, God knows you're a consistent person. So many people find excuses to do whatever they want to do. I'm proud to come from Obirako. As you may see, because you will remain that. You can see those of us who are really from Odiago. I know there are so many people who are not from Odiago who claim they are from Odiago. But our characters will know them. Coming out to make this coming out. The Obiago and Amechi Wane. Akuna now communities, native owners of the disputed Enugu Gulf and Lifestyle City, otherwise known as Centenary City in Enugu South local government area, have dragged the developers of the estate, Private Estate International West Africa Limited, the Enugu State Government, and two senior officers of the Enugu State Police Command to the National Assembly over allegations of complicity in multiple assassinations and land grabbing. In separate appeals to the House of, of Representatives Committee on Public Petitions, the two communities drew the attention of the National Assembly to the land impasse that had made an urgent plea for the House to use its oversight function in resolving the cases of senseless killings and short prosecution on investigations made by the police in the killings of youths and incarcerations of others in various police and correctional facilities across the country over the land crisis in both communities for the interest of justice, law, and order. The petition was against Mr. Kinsley Eze of Peiwa, and the Deputy Commissioner of Police Operations, Akimbayo Olasoji, and the Superintendent Chidebere Ijoma, while some of the representatives of the petitioners include Chief Chimoba Naji Aga, Chief Sunday White Naji, Elder Sunday Onuko of Amechi Wane, the two communities.
had at different times petitioned the Police Service Commission and the Enugu State Police Command on the excesses of DCP or Lasoji and SP Joma, alleging that they were compromising their, po their positions by com completely working for PIWA and assisting the company to harass, arrest, intimidate, and take over their land in clear negation of the operations of the Nigerian police. The communities say that they resorted to the National Assembly as their last resort when all hopes appeared lost in the face of the most vicious land-grabbing spree and illegal acquisitions of their ancestral land, followed by reprehensible demolitions perpetrated against them first by Pewa, led by one Kingsley Eze with his armed thugs and some persons in police uniform. The Enugu State government later procured perhaps to make the demolitions look legitimate. The communities la lamented that the gruesome murder of a police officer, Inspector Celestine Orodionwe, of the Force Criminal Investigations Department annexed in Enugu in December 2021, who was investigating the land grabbing case they reported against some hirelings of the Pewa, adding that 2021 and 2022, the mother of Chidera Ogaba, Comrade Kelvin Ezeonha, so Sunday Ngene of Obeago and others took place in the same pattern where hooded men were reportedly used to perpetrate dastardly acts. The Ministry of Inter in Industry, Trade and Investment has directed applicants of the Presidential Conditional Grant Scheme to submit their national identity numbers as part of necessary requirements to obtain a grant earmarked to cushion the effect that recent economic reforms had, had on the businesses in the country. The government, through the Bank of Industry, had said that it will be disbursing three categories of funding totaling 200 billion naira to support manufacturers and businesses across the country. It said the new rule was based on the new regulations from the Central Bank of Nigeria directing Nigerians to link their national identification numbers with their bank accounts. The Trade Minister Doris Anele issued the new directive in a post on her official ex formerly Twitter on Sunday. The post titled Updates of the Presidential Conditional Grant Program Application Process explained that all applicants will receive an SMS from FG Grant Loan with instructions to submit this information will receive this notification and NINs must match the applicant's name for process to proceed. The latest development marks another delay in disbursing the grants announced by President Bola Tinubu in a nationwide address in August 2023 for manufacturers and small businesses. In the address, the president said that he was determined to, to strengthen the manufacturing sector, increase its capacity to expand and create good paying jobs. The Nigerian Labor Congress has cautioned the Independent National Electoral Commission against validating the Labor Party National Convention scheduled for March the 27th, 2024. NLC issued the caution in a letter addressed to the chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu. In the letter by the NLC's solicitors, Falana and Falana Chambers, dated March the 22nd, 2024, the NLC accused the LP chairman, Julius Abure, and his associates of planning an illegal convention in defiance of court's orders. The NLC noted that such a national convention was illegal due to standing court rulings that declared the LP status and ordered inclusive conventions. The NLC in a letter signed by Marshal Abubakar threatened legal action if INEC fails to comply with the demand. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have seized over 44,000 illicit drugs and arrested eight suspects in multiple raids across Lagos, Edo and Ondo states. The anti-narcotics agency has seized 11 vehicles owned by drug cartels, and this revealed the agency's director of media and advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, in a statement on Sunday. The statement noted that no less than 14,000 kilograms of psychoactive substances were raised on the 5.7 hectares of farms in Ohosu, Ubogui, Forest, Ovia, Southwest, 
local government area of Edo State on Tuesday, March the 19th. Five suspects, including a 67-year-old Sunday Otulugo, Abayogo, Joshua, Kelvin Ofusia, Williams Peter, and Kamanu Onimisi, were arrested. It's, it's also added that 7,687.8 7, kilograms of cannabis was destroyed in a warehouse in Allah Forest, Akure, on the state, with another 670 kg evacuated on Sunday, March the 23rd. The statement read in part in another operation at Uzaba or Ubie, Ubiosi Forest in Tuesday, 21st, 6,500. Six thousand five hundred kilograms of cannabis was destroyed on two point six hectares of farm with three suspects Kabiru Idris, Alaba Jimo, and Lekon Asobere were arrested in the same vein. Five thousand kilograms of the same substance was raised in a warehouse at Obuje Forest on one West local government area by NDLEA operatives and with support from the military on Friday, March the twenty second. The agency stated that in a well-coordinated operation on Wednesday, March 20th, in Lagos State, its operatives seized 10,534 kilograms of Ghanaian loud, a strain of cannabis in the Aja area of the, of the state where 11 vehicles were seized from the drug cartel. The West African Examinations Council has elected Professor Thomas Brina Rick Yoma as the 21st chairman of the council during the 72nd annual council meeting. Head of public affairs at the WIAC headquarters in Accra, Ghana, Demarius Ojegu, Ojegu announced the election in a, in a statement on Wednesday um, by the weekend. Professor Yoma, who succeeded Professor Ato Esuman from the Republic of Ghana, was elected at a week-long a council meeting held in the Republic of Sierra Leone. In his keynote address, the Sierra Leonean president, Julius Mada Bio, who, represented, who was represented by his vice, Dr. Mohamed Judi Jallo, declared the gathering opened and congratulated WAEC and on its 72nd anniversary. He noted that the council had played a prominent role in the educational development of the sub region over the past 72 years and had indeed served as a catalyst for educational reforms that had evolved in the member countries. The Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, Sierra Leone, Comrade Sake, noted that since its inception in 1952, the Council had played its role creditably by assisting in the development of sound education and ensuring the maintenance of educational standards. This, he said, had given the people of the sub-region a vision of the great potentials that lie beyond examinations. He congratulated WAEC for remaining relevant for over some decades and still counting and urged all stakeholders to rally the council and stamp out examination malpractice in public examinations in the member countries. Fans have mourned the death of veteran Nollywood actor Amechi Monago, who died on Sunday at the age of 61. Fans took to social media on Sunday to mourn the passing of the actor, known for his comical roles on screen, who passed away after a protracted battle with kidney disease. The chairman, Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rollers, could not be immediately reached for comments on the actor's demise as phone calls and texts made his phone line made to his phone line were not responded to on Sunday evening. Monago was said to have suffered kidney failure and was on dialysis. The news of his demise came a few days after a viral video where the actor solicited funds to help him have a kidney transplant.